Shoes, packaging, batteries. Many everyday items are very difficult and sometimes impossible to recycle, but not for much longer. At the ICMCB laboratory, led by CNRS research professor Cyril Emonier, scientists are developing solutions that could revolutionize recycling. They are using common supercritical fluids, such as CO2 or water, which can acquire astonishing new properties when placed under unusual temperature and pressure conditions. Here's a shoe near the end of its life cycle, a worn shoe that we're going to put in this autoclave with supercritical CO2. The hermetically sealed autoclave is used to control the experimental conditions. Supercritical CO2 is injected at a temperature of over 31 degrees and a pressure exceeding 74 bars. And after about 10 minutes of this process, Here are the different parts of the shoe that have been separated after processing. You can see that the sole has been delaminated and that the upper is on the other side, since we'll get plastic materials that can very easily be recycled separately, and here, mainly polyester, which we are totally familiar with since it's the same plastic as bottles. Behind what looks like a magic trick is a physical explanation linked to the particular properties of supercritical fluids. To understand this better, let's consider the example of CO2. It's okay, go ahead. Here, CO2 is injected into a tube as it is pressurized. It is in a liquid state. It is then heated and gradually disappears from view, although it is not in a gaseous state. This CO2 is now supercritical. Molecules in supercritical conditions are schizophrenic. They hesitate between the liquid and the gaseous state. Which is why, in supercritical conditions, we'll find these intermediate properties between liquid and gas. Gas can go anywhere, in any available volume. On the other hand, liquids have the ability to dissolve molecules. This supercritical CO2 is already used to manufacture one of the most popular products, decaffeinated coffee. It has replaced chemical solvents to produce coffee that is healthier. The CO2 must penetrate the coffee beans, but also be able to dissolve the caffeine so that it can be extracted from the beans to produce decaffeinated coffee. This is also what happens in the shoe. Supercritical CO2 is able to penetrate between the layers of material and dissolve the adhesive, which can then be extracted. There are countless applications for supercritical fluids in the field of recycling, especially in packaging and fashion, the world's biggest producers of plastic waste. With the surge in demand for electric vehicles, another major challenge is battery recycling. This is the type of battery found in electric cars. There may be hundreds or even thousands of them in what are called battery packs. These batteries contain electrodes made of elements such as nickel, cobalt, or lithium, which are magnets with a very high market value, and which we are trying to salvage and recycle. So that's where we start from. And here, Neil is cutting these electrodes into small pieces. At the laboratory scale, we're working on small quantities. We'll be able to carry out several tests and define the best conditions for recovering all these elements. The purpose of this experiment is to find the optimum temperature and pressure conditions for separating the rare metals in the positive electrode from the aluminum sheet to which they are bonded. You separate the electrode from the aluminum current collector. Yes. And yeah. here. Okay. Oh, this is nice. really great. We must publish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very quickly. Did you test the performance of the, the batteries prepared with the recycled materials? Yes, indeed. We tried it with the bad coin source, and we have seen that they have the same capacity as to that of the pristine materials. Wonderful. Yes, indeed. 
If we take the example of electric vehicles, or more generally the transportation sector, the stakes are huge. In France, we're in the process of developing what are known as gigafactories to be able to produce batteries on French soil. To do so, you need raw materials. But these resources are lacking here in France, which is why recycling is so important. We'll be able to bring resources into the gigafactories by reprocessing batteries that have reached the end of their life cycle. What used to be waste could become a resource, reducing the need to extract raw materials. This is the principle of the circular economy, which could soon be applied to another family of materials, composites. To recycle them, another fluid, supercritical water, is used. It serves to produce the latest generation of aircraft and wind turbine blades. They're made from carbon fiber composites ground into a polymer matrix. And these polymer matrices are difficult to recycle. Supercritical water dissolves the resin, extracts it, and recovers clean carbon fibers that can be reused in a new composite material. Recycling is a good thing, but employing simpler materials would be even better. Yet when it comes to assembling complex ones, supercritical fluids offer a promising opportunity. The final stage in this process is the transition from lab to industrial scale, which should take place within the next five years. To take things even further, a major recycling research program led by the CNRS has just been launched.